Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Do you know the Tesla secret service mode? And in this video, we're going to do a complete walkthrough of Tesla service mode on my 2023 Model Y. And what you can and you should do using the service mode and what you shouldn't do with it. Stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, now we're in the car and let's first get into this secret service mode. Well, I guess it's not that secret, um, but if you tap the car's menu and go to software and tap the model in here, and it'll pop up open a menu that you type the password, which is a service. And then hit OK. This is just like a disclaimer and make sure that you know what you're doing with this mode. And then here we tap enter. And now we're entering the Tesla service mode. And here you can see this like a right bar, I think across the whole screen, that means you are in a service mode. And in the service mode, you have the access to a lot of additional information that you don't have access in your regular mode. And here you can see this is your VIN number, odometer, and auto pedal hardware. I have is the full self-driving computer, which is hardware 2.0, and the infotainment hardware, which is the AMD chip. And here, first, I want to talk about a few things that you can do with your service mode. And in some cases, it is really helping and it can even help to fix some issues of your car. And the first is check the service alert. And we can see a, there's a button here. If you tap it and open up like all the service alert. And we have the service fix and the customer alert. And if you look at the customer alert, I think there's some notifications and tell you like one or more cameras has, has reported a block view. I think this is not really an issue, but more like a notification. For the service fix alert, it doesn't necessarily mean it is something that you need to fix, but it is always valuable to give you this information that something is, you feel worried about it and then you have no idea what's going on, like feel free to reach out to the Tesla. Maybe they need to schedule a service fix. Okay, now let's go back. I want to quickly talk about the service settings. It's because once you're in a service mode and certain functions of your car is disabled. And for example, you have a speed limit of seven miles per hour, and that means you cannot drive really, really fast. So if you remove the speed limit, that means you can still drive at faster speed. So we're going to do the brake burnishing in the later of this video, and I will show you how that really works. So there's other settings like the phone, Bluetooth, uh, manual ESA, eCal, and disabled active battery heating. So all of those could be re-enabled in the service setting. Another useful feature and that you can do is the touch check. So the touch check means if you have some issues with your touch screen. So for example, if you tap like a certain place, it is not working. And here is a place that you can check if the touch screen is fully functional. So here, wherever you touch, you can see from here the right line. So what I will usually test is just like I just try like the corner and then I just do a bunch of touch and then make sure so the touch is working and and that's basically the touch check. And to activate the touch check, uh, you need to hold the two corners of your display simultaneously. So I usually use my thumb. So I will just hold here and it will activate the touch check. And next thing that you can definitely do is monitor additional vehicle status. In the regular mode, that you don't really have access to a lot of the status things like the battery, camera, and HVAC system. And here you have all those informations. I'm gonna quickly show you like a few options. And then the first is the driver assist. So here you have the access to all the cameras. I think if you look at those cameras, it's basically show like the eight cameras available on your Tesla. And if you see like all the green color, that means so everything is functional and it's in a working condition. So here you have a few buttons, ping does, reset does. So that is basically driver assistance system. So in here, I don't really recommend to touch these four buttons and unless you know what you're doing or you are a technician. It's mostly because this is related to the camera. And if something is offset or something is changed, I think you have to schedule a service. And next is the infotainment. And here you can see all the connectivities. I think the cell signal, the Wi-Fi signal are all green here. And next is the ECU update status. Here, most likely, it just show like all the green here. 
and I don't think you need to dig into what are those things means but if you see like right color or other colors that means maybe something is going wrong and next is the high voltage battery a really nice feature in here is you can see your high voltage battery's temperature and then it's the HV battery which is show the battery capacity and then the HVIL, HVIL is basically the high voltage interlock loop. So the HVIL is basically a feature that helps to protect passengers and drivers in the event of an accident. And here it shows everything screen and I mean that looks good. The low voltage battery is a similar thing. It shows all the functionality about the low voltage battery, the power distribution, and you can see the voltage in here. I think my car is relatively new, so I don't, I don't think there's any issues with the low voltage battery and the home link is if you want to install your home link retrofit if you really want to install this yourself i think you can follow the instruction in here and by just tap the home link retrofit unlock the gateway and then i will show you very quickly in the later of, of this video how to unlock it and then you just follow the instruction and then you'll be able to install your home link okay cool and that is everything that you can monitor and look at from your service mode. It is very useful and even though there's not a lot of actions, but it gives you an idea of like how your car is doing. And next, a useful feature is resetting the steering angle. And this setting is in the chassis. So if you go to chassis and go to alignment and tires, and here you can actually reset the steering angle. And the car's steering angle is usually need to be reset after every wheel alignment. And also like if you're driving the car in an extended period. And there also could be some steering offset that apply to your car. And in the Tesla service mode, it provides like a very good way to reset apply offset. And if I turn my steering wheel, and then it will actually show like the applied offset in the middle, and which is shown like a green color in here. So here you can see I have like 0 0.9 degree offsite. So now I'm going to do the clear applied offsite. So basically here I need to unlock the gateway. So to do this, you need your key card present. So it's similar as you use the key card to drive your Tesla. You put it under the center console and then you apply the brake. And at the same time, you hold up the right turn signal. Now I start the counter for eight seconds. I can see from the screen and now the gateway is unlocked. So you have 90 minutes after this time is unlocked. And here I'm gonna clear the applied offset. Hit wrong. Okay, that's really fast. It's a successfully reset ESP and the EPAS and the DI angle offset. Now I'm gonna tap close so after you clear the offset uh, you can drive a little bit of your car and then it will show like zero degree in here so that's it for clear the the apply offset for your uh, uh, steering wheel okay now i'm gonna show you another useful feature in the service mode which is the window calibration and now if i, I go to closure and tap window and here you can see like all the four windows, there's like calibrate button that you can calibrate your window. Uh, I think there's one time driver's side rear window cannot roll all the way up. And then I just do like a quick calibration from the service mode and then actually fix issue. It, it works like a charm. So here I'm going to do it again and then kind of show you how this works. So now if I tap calibrate, tap wrong. So it started to calibrate the window. It's basically rolling up and down of that window. I think it's kind of calibrating and sensing uh, the window frame. And now it shows the routine past. And if you close it and then you successfully calibrate your window. Another useful feature is called the SCCM. And basically it's the steering column control module from the chassis and go to SCCM. So what it does is it lets you test all the buttons on your steering wheel. And which is a very cool feature if you tap like a certain button and then it kind of show if that button really works. So if I press the park button and then it would kind of show. And if you turn up the stall, I think that's also show. And next, uh, I'm going to show you like a very cool feature in the service mode, which is called the brick burnishing. And if you go to uh, chassis 
and go to bricks and here i usually i don't touch the the brick blade and options and also i don't usually use the epp service mode and here the only thing i do is the brick stiffness test it's a basic test kind of give you an idea like if your brick is really in working condition if you tap it click wrong and then it will basically run a stiffness test what i really want to show you is the brick burnishing so what is brick burnishing so the process of the brick burnishing is really help to bat the brick. So it's more like every time when you install the new brick pad and router, and it kind of like apply the pressure to the brick and help to bat the braking system. It can basically put the brick in like a comfortable and then smooth mode. But for Tesla, it is like a little special. It's because Tesla have this all this like regenerative braking that you don't usually use your brake. And over time, especially you are in an area that has rain, wet weather, and also like snow, your router will become rusty and your brake pad sometimes will become like uneven surface. In that case that you need to burnish your brake and then kind of like a really bad your braking system and then help you to put your brake back in like a normal and smooth and working condition. So the brake burnishing is basically a process that can help with that. So here, if I start to push the brake and then it kind of shows it kind of shows like the number which is the pressure and then if I keep hitting it and then it goes into this target zone and that means this is the good pressure for the brake burnishing and also you need like a speed that means like if I drive from zero to a target speed and then I just start hitting the brake pedal I'm gonna hit it to a target and then that's kind of like one cycle of your brick burnishing process. So the complete brick burnishing process, it needs like 10 cycles, but in here, uh, I'm gonna show you one cycle very quick and kind of show you this how this process works. And first, uh, I need to go back to service mode. So if you remember, I previously mentioned like in a service setting that we need to remove the speed limit. Otherwise you cannot really drive at an over seven miles per hour. I usually do this in like an open road and make sure there's no other cars, there's no like a busy street. So if we start a guided process and now I'm start to accelerate to the target speed. Okay, good. And now you start to apply the brake and make sure it's constantly in the target. Okay, now, we finish one cycle and there's a cool down period. I think in this period, it's good that you don't hit the brake. So once the cool down period is finished, you can start the next cycle. Okay, and now you can see the cycle, it shows number one. And now let's start the next cycle. I start to accelerate to 50. And then now I'm hitting the brake in the target range. So make sure there's no car behind you. I think that's kind of scary. Okay, and now another cooldown. So basically you get idea. And this is how we burnish the brick. If you complete like 10 cycles, uh, it will basically complete the, the burnishing process. The brick burnishing is especially useful if your brick is starting like acting weird or is making like a squeaking sound. And all of those like a symptom means that you need to burnish your brick. Typically like brick burnishing is a process that you need to send your car to the to the shop or service center and Tesla service mode really provide this useful way to help you to burnish your brake that you can do it yourself. And now let's talk about a couple things that in the service mode that you shouldn't touch unless you know what you're doing. And the first is the thermal control. And under thermal control, there's like four options. They have uh, actions, uh, refrigerator system, cooling system, and HVAC. So in here, I think most of those options and those buttons are basically for testing or running or draining the coolant and also something related to the HVAC and the refrigeration system. So in here, let's say in the refrigerant system, I think it shows the overall flow of your refrigerant, which is really cool. But here, I think all of those buttons are kind of dangerous if your car doesn't have any issues. And if you pry some of those options, it will start to drain your coolant. And I think it's a good place to monitor all of the states in here. See, I think there's some temperatures, so there's some like a status, I think in here I, I see all the green colors, which means everything is working condition. But here I don't recommend that you start like draining or purge any of those things in here. So I highly recommend that you don't touch those buttons uh, unless you are a technician or you really know what you're doing. And another thing that I 
wouldn't recommend to do is the software reinstall. And software reinstall is only needed if you install some hardware module like the CCS retrofit. You need to reinstall software. And otherwise, if you drive your car normal, like, so you don't really need to do the software reinstall. I think I never reinstalled the software. I think uh, I wouldn't touch this option as well. Okay, and this is our complete tour of the Tesla service mode. And the service menu for different cars and different model year is also slightly different. I have a 2018 Tesla Model X, and the service menu from that car is, has less features than the, my 2023 Model Y. But in general, I think the Tesla service mode is very useful, that it gives the Tesla owner some ability to fix some issues that without driving the car to the service center. In general, the recommendation is always, please don't touch any settings if you don't know what you're doing. And there may be more uh, options and there may be more features in the service mode that I don't even know. And if you know more, please leave your comments below. If you like my video, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.